Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm so grateful you're here with me today. And welcome to Art Exploration with Jessica from Color Me Creative, Kelly from Kelly Chassis Fine Art, and me from Indigo Jade Art, where every month in 2020 we are taking a deeper dive and exploring a new color. All three of us met as online teachers and we just love teaching and exploring new mediums. For February, all three of us are sharing a video tutorial highlighting the color purple and all of its beautiful hues. You can also participate in our monthly challenge and dive in a bit more with us in our private Facebook group. The link to join is listed below. Now let's dive into this month's color. Friends, it's all about purple and her beautiful hues. I'm going to take a deeper dive into my favorite purples and violets for watercolor, and we'll make a fun project together. Let's get started with a little story I have to share. Every spring since my father passed, a beautiful meadow of violas have showed up in my front yard. At first it was a small patch, and every spring it grows and grows, and it's almost taking up the entire front yard. It is a true gift and message from him, and I just love it. The beautiful purple hues are gorgeous, gorgeous, and I enjoy this time every year, and it inspires me to paint. Last summer in my watercolor palette series, I shared my favorite purple watercolor brands, and I'm going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into them with you right now. I have all of my favorite purple hues swatched out here, and I'm just going to walk through them with you and just talk a little bit about them. They, these purple hues are on my mixed palette that I created for floral watercolors. And I'm just gonna open up this palette and just kind of show you where they are on um, this palette. This is a big one. This is a Magello Bulletproof palette. It's not really bulletproof, but that's what they call it. And here's where all of my purples are on my palette. They are right near the red, uh, the pinks and the reds and the magentas. And uh, I just love all these colors. They're so delicious. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the actual brands. So here are the purple hues that are on my watercolor palette. And we're just gonna take a quick walkthrough. I have Daniel Smith Quinacridone Magenta, Daniel Smith Quinacridone Violet, Daniel Smith Quinacridone Purple, Holbein Bright Violet, love that color. Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine, love that color. Windsor Newton Permanent Mauve, and that's a really, really interesting granulating color. Sennelier Dioxazine Purple and Sennelier Violet Blue. And those two colors are the colors I'm going to use for the project today, along with the Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine. So here's a look at the project I'm going to share with you today. And I'm going to walk through using those three purple hues to create this beautiful viola inspired by my dad. Okay, we're gonna take a quick look at the supplies. I have some round brushes here and a four, six, and eight. I have two glasses of water um, to clean my brushes. I'm also going to be using some Arches watercolor paper. This is a nice 100% cotton, 140 pound, super thirsty watercolor paper. We're gonna be doing a lot of wet and wet, so I need a really nice paper for this project. I have a piece of cardstock cut to an A2 size card. This is from Gina K Designs, and it is a slate gray, so a real nice neutral color that I'm going to use to as our card base. So let's go ahead and dive in. So here are the swatches for the colors I'm going to be using. Sennelier Dioxazine Blue, Sennelier Violet Purple, and I'm going to use the Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine. So I have them all in tubes here, and I really love these two colors from Sennelier. The Dioxazine Purple is really super nice. They're both really great pigments to use. So we've got a lighter purple and a darker purple. That dioxazine purple is really, really dense 
purple hue and that violet blue color is a nice lighter shade. Now here's my Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine and you can see that it's well loved and I'm really running out. So I'm going to be using it right from the tube instead of squirting it out onto my porcelain plate here. I've got a I've got a rough outline sketch of the viola and you can download that for free. The link is listed below, so you can go ahead and grab that. And we are going to paint each element of this project one petal at a time. So let's go ahead and get started. The two watercolor techniques that we're going to be doing for this project are wet and wet and glazing. So right now I am just putting a generous amount of water onto the entire project. And I'm dipping my paintbrush into that violet blue color. So that's the lighter hue of purple. And I'm dropping that color in very generously over top of the whole entire flower. And I'm going in with a little bit of sap green as well from Sennelier. And I'm going to do the same dropping that little bit of color in, and you can see I'm just getting it really nice and juicy and wet, and dropping that green color into where the petals are for the flower. So the whole painting right now just looks like a wet, washy color mess, but that's okay. It's giving us our foundation of color for adding our layers on top. And it also creates that washy-washy kind of dreamy effect that we get from the painting over on the right-hand side here. So this technique, wet and wet, is so much fun because you can really just kind of explore the amount of water and the amount of pigment and paint that you're using to create different effects. So I went ahead and dried it to get it bone dry. And now I'm moving into working on each petal one at a time. So I've dipped my brush into the dioxazine purple and I just did a quick outline of that petal. And I'm using the paint that is there in the outline where I have that intensity of color. And I'm drawing that paint in. So the brush is wet, the paper is dry, and you can see that I'm moving that color in towards the center of the purple flower. So you're getting a little bit of the varied look from lights to darks in these petals. And I'm just going to be working my way around the entire project doing this very technique. Adding a little bit of the dioxazine purple along the edge of the petal, and then using water to draw that color into the center of the petal. So this technique is called glazing, where I'm just adding layers on top of layers of watercolor. And you can really get some nice looks here. And I'm loving the granulation in this particular brand of dioxazine purple. There are lots of different dioxazine purples across many different brands, so I encourage you to try different brands, but the one from Sennelier has a little tiny bit of granulation in it, which allows you to get a little bit more texture in the look and feel of the project. And that's what I was going for. I wanna use the paint and the paper to give me some nice textured looks on each one of these petals of this viola. And I'm just kind of digging it. So I'm working one petal at a time and I'm adding a little bit of the dioxazine purple around the edges, dipping my brush and getting a lot of water in there and drawing that color into the center. And allowing that dioxazine purple to be a little bit heavier around some of the edges where the two petals meet. So we can get that 3D look and feel of some petals coming forward and some of the petals going backward. And I'm also allowing the layers to dry in between. So you see that I'm going back in here and I'm adding a little bit more of the darker purple to just to a few different areas to add a little bit more of a layer of texture. So I'm working back and forth from that dioxazine purple and that violet blue, 
taking some of the color away, adding some of the color in, but not doing what I would call a smoothie blend of color. I'm just adding a little bit here and there just to work with the paper and create that textured look between the lights and the darks. Okay, so I've gone in and now I'm on layer three and I'm just kind of dabbing in a little bit of the color in some of the darker areas. So I really am kind of jacking up the look and feel of the between the lights and the darks. And you can see that with the brush, I'm dipping it in the water and I'm just dipping into that violet blue and just adding a little bit of that color, glazing it on top of what's already there to kind of make this these colors glow. So the more you glaze, you can get the colors to glow even more. So now I'm adding in the Rose of Ultramarine. So this is a different purple hue that is a little bit more on our pink or magenta side. And you can see that I'm just kind of dabbing it and dropping it in, like brush dancing it in here to enhance that color that's already there and it's making all of the colors underneath because we're working with the transparent medium here begin to pop and glow i call this like a finishing touch sometimes i use yellow on colors especially yellow on pinks to at the end here to kind of get the glow happening in my petals but using this rose of ultramarine here just a little tiny bit look at that it just adds a really nice added texture and dimension. So I've grabbed a little Daniel Smith lemon yellow and I'm just dropping a little bit of the yellow inside of the center of the viola. And now I'm just doing a little bit of flicking here and adding a little bit of texture coming out from the center of the viola here. Just a little bit of that vine like texture that you see in the petals of the viola especially the ones i showed at the very beginning of the video here and i'm just going to let those lines be pretty straight up i'm blending them out a little bit here with some water but i'm just going back and forth just adding a little bit of extra finishing elements here to get a little variation in the petals so that you begin to see some of the folds in the petals and i'm going back and forth between that dioxazine purple and adding a little bit of that rose of ultramarine as a finishing element to get these petals to glow even more so this is like the last layer for the petals where i'm just doing some of the finishing touches and adding some texture and dimension to the final project so you can see me just kind of noodling around some of the lines are getting blend blended out and some of the lines are being left just as straight painted lines. Okay, so I'm going to move on and take a little bit of that sap green and I'm just going to do some wet and wet washes with the petals, um, the leaf petals. And I'm just not going for perfection here. I'm going for a loose washy wash with the petals. And I'm going to drop a little bit of that rose of ultramarine and maybe even some of the dioxazine purple into the edges of the petals, uh, the leaves, excuse me, and just drop that in just to get a little bit of variation of color. So I want to not add too much. Like it's sometimes with the water, you get a little too much in there and you can mix a little bit of a muddy color up, but that's okay. I'm just going back and forth between that sap green and that rose of ultramarine and adding a little bit of extra color to the edges of the petals. I'm gonna play around a little bit with this sap green and I'm doing a little bit of mixing. I'm gonna take a little bit of that dioxazine purple and drop it into that sap green and see what I can create. I'm just playing around. I encourage you to play around with your colors just to get different kinds of mixes with the color. So I'm getting a little bit of a darker bluish green here, kind of like a perylene green, but I'm being very cautious of adding too much purple to that and getting mud. So I get a little bit of a darker purple, uh, darker green, excuse me, by adding a little bit of that 
purple, dioxazine purple, to the sap green. You can see I'm just going back and forth and just kind of playing around with the color combination here because I just want to add some contrast to the petals, especially the petals that are going to, the leaves, excuse me, I keep saying petals, the leaves, especially the leaves that are going to be closest to the viola petals, I want that color to be a little bit darker. So I'm playing around with that dioxazine purple and that sap green to just kind of uh, get a little bit of contrast there. So I'm just going in here and adding a little bit of rose of ultramarine and just doing some finishing touches on the petals, on the leaves. Now I'm going around the whole entire project with a clean wet brush and I'm just pulling away some of that color just to get a little bit more of a washy washy look for the final project. And this is finished. I am loving it. So I'm going to go ahead and just assemble the card. I added some double sided tape to the back of the watercolor paper to put the entire piece onto the cardstock and I am loving the way this came out. Here's a final look at the card project and I am digging it. I love all this texture and color. Ah, consider getting out all your art supplies and exploring the color purple this month. Have some fun with the wet and wet technique. You can do this. I hope you enjoyed today's art exploration tutorial. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel and head on over to Kelly and Jessica's channels to subscribe and watch their color exploration for this month as well. I've linked up the color palette series video here where I explored purples even further. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.